Hello, we meet again. At follow the best channel. In this video just only educational purposes between Christians and Muslims. And this time Mr. Ahmed EX Muslim will give many Muslims educations the truth about Jesus Christ. Now, let's look at what Muslims said to Ahmad X Muslim so we can learn the truth from them. So enjoy watching video. Please share, comment and subscribe this channel. God bless you. Now you remember, if it doesn't say spirit, a uh, Jibreel, Christian Shahada. Right? No, no, no. <laughs> Wait, that's my first argument. I have to back it up. I told you earlier, don't go there. You know me. You know me. You start by 297 and I hope you're, <laughs> you're honest <laughs> because you know the story. But go ahead. You, you know I know. So I told you don't go there. And, oh, however, it's the enemy of Gabriel should know that he revealed this to your heart by Allah's will. Confirm what came before and it's a guided a good news to the believers. Oh! It's talking yeah. about Jibreel. That Where is the Holy Spirit? Who brought down the Quran? Jibreel? The Holy Spirit. N no, la, la, okay. No. Okay. Let's. Uh, let me. Let me do something here. Here, and here. Okay, Lily. Mm -hmm. One finger up. Go ahead. Put mm -hmm. one finger up. Christian Shahada. <laughs> I don't Put do finger shahada. up. Don't You're laugh. Not even the Muslim Shahada. Come on. <laughs> I, I know. Allah, Allah took Shahada in the Quran. You don't have any shahada for Muslims. Finger up. I don't care. Finger up. What? Say. Ashadu. No, I cannot say that. Say Ashadu. <laughs> Sorry. I can't. Stop pushing her. <laughs> I, I cannot testify about something that I didn't see, you know? Oh! So you cannot testify that Allah is the best God and Muhammad is the best fiddle in the, in the Quran. Hmm. Oh, Babylon. Babylon, you're going to get the live taken down. Can you exit and join back up? No, I can't. You're going to get the live taken down. It's okay. Hey. <laughs> you're so, where does it say he, Jibreel, is the Holy Spirit? 97! It is 97. You're on 297? I am. Yeah, you're right. In this one, it does not say Jibreel is the Holy Spirit. Okay, says, then show me. Hey, Jason, good morning. Wait, the, I need huh? to say something for TikTok. Hold on. We don't condone any sensitive speech. We don't condone any hate speech. And we love the TikTok shop. Everybody go buy from the TikTok <laughs> shop. We go crazy on TikTok shop. Every oh, thank day. you. <laughs> Maria. <laughs> and Gabriel, by the way, guys, is not Jibri. <laughs> Gabriel, it's not Jibril. It's not Jibril. Jibril in Arabic. <laughs> yeah, it's not Jib Gabriel in English. Gabriel is angel. Gabriel. No, it's two different angels. This angel came and squeezed Muhammad to death three times. What? No, no, don't, don't give me hadith. Come hey, on. hey, hey, hey! I'm telling you. In the Bible. Uh, my Gabriel came and gave peace to Virgin Mary and told her, do not be afraid. I'm an angel from your Lord. Et voila, we have the same verse in the Quran. No, you don't. This guy here, no. in the Quran, he squeezed people. <laughs> Where? <laughs> You're crazy. Go, 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 go and read the, the biography of Muhammad. Nah, I don't. You already know I don't read that. Come on. I know, but uh, for everybody else. <laughs> so, show me a verse saying okay, uh, Jibril is the Holy Spirit. You cannot. It's not there. 
I will give you. Uh, I, I promise. Uh, very I'm sorry for interrupting, uh, John. John, my brother. Um, some guy in the comments named HG thinks that I have a lot of powers, which I don't give you. I'm not a moderator for you. He's wanting to come up since well, a long I'm, time. I'm the no, only one here and HTL. Jason who no, just woke up. Uh, uh, I got I'm the it. Only okay, one guys, here. no problem. Forget yeah. it. So, and Jason is uh, the host, so... I don't know if there's any mods that didn't speak yet, or... I don't know. Okay, um, who, so, Lily, um, don't worry, it's not there. It's not in the Quran, don't worry. But, but you, you take trust Ruhul Babylon, he wouldn't right? lie to you. You take Ruh al Qudus, right? In that verse, you take it? You take Where is it? Where? No, but if like okay, if the 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 person who brought down the Quran is mm. Gabriel in that verse and in yeah. another verse he's referring Oh you connect in two verses? You you listen to Imam so the Imam? No, there is one there is one person that brought uh, down the uh, Quran. Right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I know of those two verses. Not, not ten. Shh, right? Tell me. <laughs> tell me. If you if if you connect Ruh al Qudus, you cannot connect the Ruh al Qudus to. You know why? Why? There's a verse in the Quran that the Jewish squeezed Muhammad for one month. One question. They ask him, "What a spirit?" You know what Muhammad said? Yeah. What's the, what did, what's the spirit of Allah? Uh, no, what the spirit, not Allah. What the spirit? He said, what did Allah say to Muhammad? He told them um, that uh, it's a, a matter of Allah. And no one knows what the spirit, of even Allah. Muhammad knows a little bit about it. Yes. Of so Allah. how would you know? How would you know that the Holy Spirit is But you're confusing Ruh al-Qudus, Ruh al-Qudus. It's the same thing. Okay, let me give you another challenge. You remember the first time? Is it? Let your, me give you another there? challenge. When, when let I me give you another challenge. Look. Jibreel, he's an angel, right? Mm -hmm. What is he created from? Light. How do you know that? Angels are created from light. How do you know that? From the Quran. <laughs> okay. A spirit, what is the creator from? Spirit, Holy Spirit, any spirit, where they are, uh, they are created from? Are they creation? I don't know. From? From? I don't know, to be honest, I don't know. Only Allah knows about it, and Muhammad has a little bit of knowledge about it, and you, Muslim, have zero knowledge about it. Yet, you're making assumptions, this verse, plus that verse, plus this verse, plus that verse, it means Jibreel is Holy Spirit. Wow. But, but Babylon, I, I, you forgot, I take from previous scriptures. Which one? The Bible. The Bible says Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. Oh, yeah. What I read, yeah. the Holy Spirit approached Mary. And? Where? Be, to announce him the... Uh, to announce Where? Her, the arrival of Jesus. Where? In the Bible. Overshadow Mary. The angel came first and the Holy Spirit came and overshadowed Mary. Two different entities. He really says and? Two different entities. Okay, I misread them, I guess. Here you go. Now, in your Quran says, Allah something all the angels and Jibreel hmm. you are right there is no verse that says that Jibreel is the Holy Spirit 
But um, by deduction, the Jibril. By is deduction. Jibril your de is deduction. One? Your deduction is wrong. No. I'll, I'll double check again because last time I spoke with you, guy, the first first time, you remember? Were you there? Who? The first first time when I cried. <laughs> you remember? No, no, I wasn't there. That was that was the question that that broke me down. But I searched it up. I promise I searched it up. And I which I, which question? What is the Holy Spirit? And? And when I searched it up, I realized mm -hmm. by making like, um, like I underlined every time it says the Holy Spirit, Rohina, Roh, I understood mm -hmm. it's, it's three different concepts. You can, Rohina, Roh al Qudus, and Roh are not the same and are never referred in the same instance. Okay. So when Ruhina, Ruhina means our spirit. God so is speaking. Is what, that is what God blew, for example, into uh, like Jesus. No. We breathe into her. Ruhina. Ruhina. Our Holy Spirit. No, our spirit. There is no holy. Uh, Allah's spirit is holy. Yes, but I mean the Arabic word is Rohina. I don't care Arabic. When I speak about Allah, everything is holy. Do you agree or not? Yeah, of course. Okay. When it, Allah says Ruhi, my spirit is holy. Allah never says Ruhi. He says Rohina. If I show you Ruhi in the Quran, you're going to put your finger up and you say Ashadu. <laughs> ruh, Ruh, I think he's saying Ruh. Not let, me show, let me show you Ruhi. Ruhi. Mm -hmm. In the Quran, Allah says, My spirit. That means what, Lily? Lily? My spirit. And when it says my spirit, what that means? Give me what that means. When Allah says my spirit, that means Allah has a spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Quran chapter 15, 29. You read Arabic? Of course. فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتَهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي رُوحِي I see it, رُوحِي Finger up. And breathe into him. What? Oh, the wrong translation. Oh, this one is right. My spirit. Mm-hmm. Whose spirit? Allah's spirit. Holy spirit. Allah's holy. His spirit is holy. Right? Mm -hmm. mm, Allah has a spirit. Yeah? What's wrong with that? Okay, we have a problem here. Why? Why Allah says, my spirit here? In other words, our spirit. Why? Majestic we. No. Islam existed 7th century, right? Mm -hmm. The royal we existed 12th century, 5 centuries after Islam. This came 5 centuries before Majestic we. Majestic we in the trash. My spirit, Allah single, my. Our spirit, other verse, why? Our spirit is the one that says Rohina. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so that's the thing. My spirit, the thing, the our thing spirit is, and Holy Spirit are uh -huh. not the same. 
No, they are the same. It's yeah. only who's talking. No, they're not. They are the same. Allah's talking both times. But one time in singular, second time in plural. Lila, let me give Allah you an example. But when they, sorry, they, when they are used in verses, this is something I, I verified myself. They do not refer to the same instance. And the verse that you referred previously about Muhammad saying that he was only talking about my spirit, the spirit of Allah. This is the one that we do not have access and limited knowledge about it. But the Holy Spirit and Rohina is is not the same thing. So basically, if when, if we unite, when Allah's talking, if you when unite, Allah's talking, like I did, I read your scriptures. I understood overall. When Allah's talking, say in my spirit, whose spirit is that? That Allah's spirit. When Allah's talking, says our spirit, whose spirit is that? That one, uh, I forgot. But it, it's is, not Allah, is, word. is Allah spirit too? But one time singular, one time is plural. Why? Lila, let me read you um, a verse from our Bible that sh it'll show you what Babylon is trying to tell you. This is Genesis one twenty six, and it's saying the same thing, by the way. And God said, "Let us make man in our image, after our likeness." and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. I'm not going to read the rest. It just talks about the creation of uh, the creation of mankind. Uh, the I had it ready, mankind. Mary. <laughs> oh, nice, Babylon, nice. Uh, I was going there after that to show her. It says, they God, but it says, let us. They God, but let us. Lily. Mm -hmm. This verse destroyed the biggest rabbis. Why? Because it says let the God is one singular, right? The God. Mm -hmm. But it says let us. Us, 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 I don't know. But it's let us, not let me. Problem, right? Okay, so when Allah says, my spirit here, Ruhi, and our spirit, two, three, I don't know, who is it? You want me to answer? I, I, from my understanding, my spirit is the same as the one that he blew to Adam and to Jesus. That's no. No, every human being has his own spirit. This is Lily. This is Mary. This is uh, Maria. This is Christian. This is Jason. This is Babylon. This is uh, whatever, Muhammad. This is Aisha. This is uh, Jessica. Right? Mm -hmm. But here it says, our spirit. Our spirit. My spirit. Mine. Who is it? Lily, don't get uh, don't get bothered by what HK is writing. He doesn't know. Just listen to Babylon. Babylon will give you every explanation you need to understand. Okay, oh, HK, no. HK is done, is gone. Don't yeah. worry about it. So, my spirit, simple. When the father is talking, my spirit, he said. But. When he says our spirit is the father and the son, our spirits. Because mm -hmm. remember, Jesus, the man, the word, Holy Spirit. Both Quran and Bible. Our spirit. There is no majestic we. This is the most stupidest claim that Muslims came up. Because Islam started in 7th century. No, you're right, you're right. But but in 12th century, the royal we existed, came up. So Islam started five, five centuries before. 
But you so the royal we doesn't work. Ruhi is the same. Ruhi, my spirit. Ruhina, our spirit. But singular. Like Ruhi. The, the essence of it. Do you think it's the same? Same. Oh yeah. Because okay. because it belongs to Allah, to God. It's mine, right? Yes. Yes. That's it. Now, Lila, I want to add on to this. I want to explain to you why we think the Trinity, without a doubt, is true. But I have a question for you first. Mm -hmm. Allah is singular, correct? He is one. You think he's one, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, is Allah all love? He is all love, correct? Mm hmm Okay. Now, if, if Allah is all love, there's a problem there. If he is only one, because that would mean that before he created the angels and the humans, he did not experience love. Now, hold on. If Allah is all love, that means he is all love eternally. Now, if he is singular, again, this means he cannot experience love until he has made the creation, the angels and the humans. So, He's the creator of love. Yes, I understand. But listen to what I'm saying right now. Mm -hmm. If Allah is eternally all love, and He is only singular, He is not distinct in three, three, three persons. What I'm not saying they're three separate persons. They are three that make one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But they are all in one. Now, if it was only singular, he would not be able to experience love before he made creation. And God is all love. And Allah does not change. Allah cannot change. He is love from, the, from eternity. He is always love. This is why we think the Trinity, without a doubt, is true. I don't think it's possible for a singular God to experience love eternally without the creation that he has made. Mm, okay. I, I agree at some points, but disagree a bit as well. Because mm -hmm. we, we, like Allah is mentioned like his love to us. But we cannot comprehend from our human perspective of love, like we need others to love and, and apply and project that to our creator who created us, you know, and who created love. And so like when Allah... That, that what you just said is doesn't make sense. Our everything in us our existence, our attribute, our love, our essence comes from God. Whatever He yeah, created for us, yes, but of course. God doesn't come from us. Um, do, don't worry about who it came from. I can show you that Allah created Himself from the sweat of the horses in Islam. So, here we're talking logic. In Islam, there is no logic. Always playing the dumb. Always playing Allah is something else that we cannot understand. Which is stupid. Why? Our existence, our attributes, our essence, our anything you can imagine comes from God. You agree? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Can God create for us something we don't understand? No. Okay, us, beautiful. No. Beautiful. Can God create something for us that He doesn't know? Oh, no. Beautiful. Therefore, He created for us something He understands. It comes from Him, right? Yeah, but we don't have His understanding. We got something from Him. What we have today is from Him. And we understand who is He 
because we are like him. Lila, she he's not saying that we have his understanding, but she, like exactly his understanding. He's saying that we have been given understanding from God yes. out of his own understanding. Yes, that I agree. But what I said is that, uh, like, what the portion we are given of the understanding of love, that's the, the one given to us, and we love God like we love God, you understand? Mm -hmm. But that's a portion of us as human, like the way we see it is us, and it's given mm -hmm. from Him. But we cannot protect, yeah, we cannot say that you unite all the love in humanity, and you cannot, like, say that it represents God love. Who's sleeping? Someone is snoring. I don't know. Have um, you learned your snoring? <laughs> no. <laughs> Lila, we're not saying that we have, we obviously don't have the amount of love. Even for us, we understand the kind of love that God could have, but we can never comprehend the extent of love that He has. Exactly. It's not possible. Voila. So, but, so by but, then, if you say like, oh, so His extent is limited to having someone by His side, well, I d this is the part I disagree because, <laughs> I mean, us, like, we, we can barely forgive like him, we can barely, like, like, we cannot say that our, like, lim like, word applies to him because clearly it doesn't, right? Well, Lila, this is just a logical stance. The thing is, if God is singular and before he created us, how would he know what true love is? He doesn't. Is he gonna worship himself? Our true He's love really would be wrong. Our our definition of true love, he knew it to create it, right? Mm -hmm. But but we don't know his definition of true love. That's what I mean. In summary, mm. if that's. But I, again, that's my opinion and my belief. I don't. Like I love the way as well that that you you guys uh, see the the um, concept of love. I love that too, but that's my understanding. Like this is why like I it took me a while to get to this point where like we cannot use our limited knowledge. And trust me, I tried them all: science, math, philosophy, to comprehend the concept of the creator. So, like, you have at some point to, like, I would use Islamic words, like, submit to your creator in a sense that, okay, I, I agree, you're the creator, you know? And in that sense, like, everything we comprehend, we have to understand that it's a limited knowledge given to us by the creator. But we should never, ever, like, think that because we acquired knowledge, we're going to get to that point where we are like understanding god that's like that this is where you switch roles you know L lily what's the biggest way to show love for you for me mm. helping others um no helping others is not the biggest let's say you are my woman and somebody's attacking and he jump on you and he has a pew pew and I jump in front of you to protect you and I take a couple bullets yeah and I die that's a way a good way yeah you protect protection as well so I sacrifice myself for you yeah but you can show me other ways of love that doesn't need sacrifice but in that case you don't need to I, die like to show love i i had to die to save you yeah okay i understand yes yes in that case i had to die to save you right yes jesus had to die to save us save us from what sin which sin? We're still sinning. 
the sin you are in today, yes. What he what she what he's saying, um what Babylon is saying is that um the sin that he saved us from does not mean that we stop sinning or we become sinless like Jesus. It means that it has given us redemption out of those sins. Because if you read the Old Testament, there was not let me just put it into a summary for you. Sin sin was very like punished right away. Yeah, the thing is, it was very harsh. Um, the rules, the Mosaic laws were very detailed. Um, you cannot, you would be unclean if you had one sin. One sin, just one sin. I'll give you an example. The, the, the priests that would go into the temples, they would have to be clean of sin. They cannot go inside there with sin. This is how strict these things were. God wanted some type of perfection in the Old Testament. Now, this did not happen. We don't know of anybody who, was, who had this kind of perfection until Jesus came. Now, it also says in the Bible, nobody is perfect and sinless except for Jesus. Now, when Jesus came, what he did was... This law was stuck on us. It was stuck on the Jews. He came in and he fulfilled the law. By fulfilling the law and being unalived on the cross, he fulfilled that law and took the veil of evil right off of us. So it gave us an alternative way to be forgiven of sin. We wouldn't have to do all of these offerings, uh, animal animal sacrifice offerings, we wouldn't have to be purged of one sin one by one. And instead, we can pray for forgiveness, repent of our sins, and we are clean. There is no condemnation in Christ. There is no uncleanliness in, in Christ. We repent of our sins, and in that virtue, we are clean. Oh, I, I totally misunderstood that then. I thought, so, okay, if, so, like, because for me, I thought that, like, because when I read the stories of before, like, for the Jews, for example, and even before the Jews, there were some nations that were wiped out from the earth because of their tremendous sins, you know? It's not just one, like, it's like, and from my understanding, after speaking with Christians, I, I, I thought like Jesus, like kind of before he was like punished right away on earth. He, at a certain extent, if you like su supersede certain limits of sin, God will just like send something on you and you die right away. So he would intervene, right? And after Jesus, it was more like um, that stopped. That's 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 what I understood. But I have a question for you: If if that was the case for Jesus, how did Jews uh, repent? Well, have their on, repent. Or which Jews are you talking about? Are you talking about the Jews when Jesus came? Or are you talking about beforehand, before Jesus came? Huh? I thought Jews were were not Jesus' followers. No, no, they were. His disciples were Jews. Jesus was a Jew. The first uh, Christians were Jew. No, I'm talking like Judaism. Yeah, yeah. The first, for the first Jew, Jewish Judaism, they were Christian. They were Jew. So, but Jesus let's go was back a little not bit. there yet. Yeah, well, after, after. So, after. Lila, are you asking about how they got rid of sin in the Old Testament, like before Jesus came? Yes, please, yes. Okay, so before Jesus came, typically what they would do is they would do an a animal offering. They would do a sacrifice. They would, and again, this is where I'm going to go into detail of how how strict God was with them. God wanted them to prov provide a lamb that was spotless, no blemish, 
a perfect lamb for an offering. They would uh, burn that offering and that, that would clean them of their sin. And the thing is about that, Lailai, the, the person who went into the temple to do this also had to be clean of sin. Now, when you think about sin, having one sin, having no sin on you is extremely difficult. We all know that. This is what I'm talking about when I say that when what Jesus did was truly amazing for us because he gave us a way out of that. He fulfilled that law by being completely sinless. But this this is uh, typically what they did to get rid of sin. And and again, there's 613 mosaic laws and each one of them are very very detailed very very detailed making like committing a sin in that time was pretty easy i imagine if any one of us lived at that time i don't i think it would be very hard for us to keep up with that time where we would have to follow all of these laws and each sin well not each sin but every time you would sin you would become unclean so you would have to do an animal offering and with Jesus coming, we no longer have to do those things. Can I just jump in there? God bless you guys. Good morning. Ma good morning, my time. Good morning. Good morning. Um, exactly what you said there, sis, is about this the sacrifice, right? And the unblemished sacrifice. And we know that Jesus was the unblemished sacrifice. He had no marks on him. He had no sins on him. But I want to just take you back. You asked, why did Jesus have to die? That's what your question was. Um, you know, when, when Jesus did the first miracle, according to the Bible, when he took the wine and the water and made it into wine, he took the wine and he poured it into new skin, right? New skins, because you can't have old wine in new skins. You have to have new wine in new skin. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, if you can read that for me, Babylon, Second Corinthians 5.17, it says um, that you have to be new in Christ. You are made new in Christ. And when we talk about new in Christ, you are now unblemished in Christ. You are sinless in Christ. But then you said we are all sinners. Agree. But we have the choice not to sin. We have the choice to know why Jesus did this greater sacrifice. That's why Babylon gave you an example about he stood between you and someone that was wishing to do you harm. He was willing to take upon that pain for you as the the best and the greatest sacrifice ever. Now, James, when you, you want me to read, read it? If Good. you can, that would be great. What's Second saying? Corinthians the 5, 7. The pain from who? The Sorry. pain from who? In that case, what is the bullet? the sin i suppose if he's taking the sins from you the bullet is the sin and and again when we're talking about this you the, the big question again is if you took adam and eve the question was why didn't adam and eve just get forgiven and taken back into heaven now if we take a vase you guys say vase if we take a vase and we break the vase or we break a glass and we glue this vase together it's not new it's still the old glass that's broken so God can't take us broken back into heaven because we are broken. And through brokenness, we can't accept him wholly. So we have to be made new. This is why we had to be cleansed, cleaned out new. We have to become a new creation to get back into the good, into the fold of Christ or into the fold of, of, of heaven because we are broken on the inside. And to be so made... So when you, when, you, when you know that you can ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Now, when we're talking about forgiveness. I think that's John. He answered. He answered his dream. He's sleeping. 
<laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so I forgot your question. <clears throat> I'm just wondering, you said that Adam was sent and oh, yeah. because of his sin, he did not so, go back to heaven. So we, he, we have to be born. repentance. Yeah. So Jason. We repentance. Jason. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Good morning. <laughs> so, so through repentance, right now, again, I'll say this to you: um, if your if your child, do you have any children? No. Okay. Um, one day, hopefully, you'll have children if you want. Um, and and you know, when you teach your children, the thing is, I didn't know this until too late. Um, but when you teach your treat your teach your children stuff, you teach them right from wrong. And we know as children, we were once children that we will test the waters, we'll test our parents, we'll do things we're not allowed to do. But when we do it, and if we hide what we did, it doesn't mean it didn't happen. We're just hiding it, right? But if we do something and we confess our sins and we openly say that we've done something and we will, you know, we show repentance, we show remorse and we say, I don't want to do this again. Now, my father wouldn't say to me, go and do a hundred push-ups or I need you to wash a thousand cars or I need you to go and clean a hundred houses. Um, if he's doing that, he's not showing the kind of remorse or the kind of, of acceptance a parent would have. Right? You don't punish your child on top of that because he's asking you forgiveness, but your child must pay for his sins. Right? For every action, there's a reaction. My father did. <laughs> Sorry. My father did. Yeah, yeah, but again, here's my thing. My point is that there is going to be a reaction. You will be treated, you will be, it will affect your relationship with your father. Right? So if I went and I say I, I, I robbed a bank. <clears throat> and I came to my father, that would be very difficult for me and my father to repair that, what I just did, because he lost trust in me, he lost faith in me. Yes. But again, I don't have to now go and wash the windows of every bank just to make up to my father. Because I, between me and my father, I need to first seek forgiveness and know that there will be a consequence. Now in Islam, you have the opposite. You have to do a thousand good deeds and it wipes away the bad deed. Huh. In Islam, for example, you will a, wish a thing. that it wipes away, but there is no guarantee. Exactly, there's no guarantee in Islam. But one thing I can promise you in Islam in Surah 1971, it says all Muslims go to hell. Every Muslim goes to hell. In the Quran, it says in Surah 1971. <laughs> in a but sense that go, not every, there are, yeah, there are exceptions, but uh yes because you have to pay for you have to there's, answer there's, for no, your there's sins. no exceptions every single muslim will go to hell according to that verse but i want to just show you something else now if for example we are following if if i said to my child right we're talking about consequence if i said to my child i want you to go to the store and i want you to steal bubble gum and you will do it and if you don't do it I will punish you for it, but you don't have a choice. You have to go steal the bubble gum. The child goes, steals the bubble gum, comes home, and then I punish the child for stealing the bubble gum. Am I a good father? No. Okay. But in the Quran and in Islam, Allah is the one that makes a man commit adultery and then punishes him for committing adultery. Now, there's no choice in this. There's no choice. Allah says in the hadith that what, what every is, man... Oh no, I reject hadith. Again? Allah doesn't tell you to commit adultery and I reject hadith. Use Quran what? only. Okay, we can go to the Quran only. In Surah 1983, Allah is the one that puts devils on people to make them commit sin. But in the Bible, it's the opposite. We are protected by angels. Why? Like, because what? God knows that we are sinners, that we are weak, we are flesh. In, in Surah 1983. So all we're saying is that according, for us, salvation comes through one man, and that's Jesus Christ. But for Muslims, salvation comes through every single Christian and Jew. 
your no, sins no, no, will be placed on the Christians and Jews. That's hadith, brother. I know that you don't, but this is what the majority of Muslims believe today. No, that's what they, they, they misinterpreted. <clears throat> okay, but even in according to the Quran, it says that you bear the burdens of others. But we have one that bears our burdens. No, we don't. We don't. Bear it does, my, my sister. It does in the Quran. It says that you will bear, bear, bear the burdens of others. If you harm them. No, not if you harm them. Either they way. They don't forgive you. No, 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 no. The verse says that you will, you will bear. There's the contradiction because the one says you will never bear the burden of anyone else, and the other one says that you will bear the, your burdens and the burdens of someone else. Where? Give me a minute. I'll go and get it for you. But the most beautiful love story you'll ever hear is about this man called Jesus Christ that gave his life so that we may live. So we are we there, but according to Adam, are we burying his burden? He no, we become a we, sinful nature. We are born with sinful nature. But that's in your Quran as well, or in the Hadith, not the Quran. So, so in the Quran, the story of Adam is very different. Lila, yeah, for us, um, the story of Adam and Eve was they were. What we observe is that before they fell into the sin, they basically had perfect bodies. You know, like uh, how you say a heavenly body. Correct me if I'm wrong, though. Um, they didn't have to eat didn't have to drink water they were in the paradise and once they sinned it, it it affected their bodies it defiled their bodies and it made them into what we have now it gave them uh it made them to have to eat to have to drink to have to create their own food and to have a painful birth this is this is the consequences of that original sin, and we all hold that today. I have the verse if you want. I don't. I don't like that concept. Do you but want the verse? It's not our fault that he ate the apple. But Lai Lai, um, even though I disagree with your interpretation on uh, all the believers going near hell, I also think that's unfair. Why? Why, after this life of suffering, would Allah, Allah allow you to go near to hell and then bring you up to heaven? When we pass away for us... It's not hell. It's not, there is only one type that goes directly to hell. No, 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 no. It's the they one that near. do not follow the Tenth Commandment. No, 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 no. Are you talking about, are you talking about us or are you talking about your Quran. In the Quran, like, the, you know, I cannot tell you I'm going to heaven or I'm going to hell because I will do my best to ask forgiveness for every bad things I did and to try to do good. But I ask forgiveness. I'm not get like, I don't know the answer of my request, you know. I will know it on the day of judgment when my good deeds and bad deeds and everything will testify of everything I've done in my life. So during that process, it's like it's, there is no heaven and hell at that. The day of judgment, you will face first your judgment and from there, you're going to go to heaven or hell. But the thing is, uh, Lailai, according to Islam, when all believers, when they pass away, they will go near to hell. That doesn't mean they're all going to hell, which I, I think so, but... It's um, a bridge. Yes, the thing is, I think that's a little unfair too. Why would Allah allow them to go near to hell and then bring them to heaven after this life of suffering? Because you have to answer to your sin no matter what. Can, can I just jump in there for two seconds? You because said the Ten Commandments. If you sin, the... Like, you know, you got, there's different degrees of sin, but there are certain sins that 
even if you ask Allah forgiveness, you also have to ask the person and you have to repent and you have to repair your damage. For example, if you're, you're, you're doing harm to a certain, another person, that's like, uh, that's, that's like something very important. Because when he, even if like Allah forgives you, then that day you have to still answer to your sins. So this is why I believe that you are like near near hell. That doesn't mean you're in hell. It just means like this is like the bridge. And however you answer your sins, you know, you have your life to answer your sins. You better do like... Uh, repent and catch up but you're also gonna have a chance like I believe like uh, during the day of judgment you you'll be given like there are certain people that maybe they'll go directly to heaven but there are certain people that will stay a little bit in that ridge until they understand all their sin and they like clear their their sin and then they will be in a state of mind yeah. that they are Lily Lily, there's no such a thing, honey. Yeah. There's no either you go to hell or either you go to heaven. There's no, I go transit in hell and take some vacation in there until I take a shower and jacuzzi and then I jump to the, there's no such a thing, honey. Either hell or heaven. No, in, from my understanding so far, that, like I believe in a God that is merciful. So even if you did sin you have your life the best get a, like way is to repent now okay but after death you will still there is different levels you know no that's and a lie still, that's you a will lie you have to repent that's a lie the test is on earth only there's no levels no upgrade update there's no such a thing all no, but like, you know why lies. I would say that? Because there are some people, for example, they sin, they're like, but they don't have knowledge about the, let's say, the scriptures, or they will be judged according to their knowledge and they will be. That's from the Bible, sister. That's not that's the Quran. Bible. No, also in the Quran, this one. Show it to me, because I'm telling you now, in Surah, I've got it in front of me right now. Surah 1971 says. Everyone will be brought to hell, then the righteous will be saved. So no matter what, everyone will go to hell in Islam. Not will be taken to heaven directly or this, that and the other. Everyone will go to hell, then What's the, the verse, righteous will brother? be saved. What's the verse? Because I opened 1971. And then we have to ask ourselves, does Allah forgive all sin? Over hell, not on inside hell. Um, Translation, is wrong. Arabic? Translation is wrong. But it says near hell, even in Arabic. So uh, means you enter it. So none of you, that means all of you, will enter it. And you, if you know, you need to know where, you just read number 70 and it says burning in it, which is hell. Mm. No, but if you take the whole scriptures, you, it's very clear that there is like this day of judgment that will define your, basically where you end up. Okay, let me ask you a question. Yes, has just one question. If, if I had a, a child, and you knocked my child, say you unalive my child while you were driving and you're on your phone. What good deeds would you have to do for me to forgive you? Or how much do you need to do to make me, and I'm not talking as Allah, I'm talking as a, as a father. What would you need to do to make me forgive you or to feel that you've paid for your sin? Say you were drinking alcohol or something and you were, you know, inebriated. What? How many good deeds do you think you would need to do for me to forgive you? Very good question. Um, first of all, just because you do good deed, like I said, it's not a guarantee that you exactly. will be forgiven. 
but exactly you will try sister. your best you know you will try everything you can so in in my what? case i would stop okay. drinking alcohol stop driving a car I won't see, take Lala, it. Lala, watch this Lala, watch this what all that teaches yeah. you is to do good deeds that's all he teaches you all but, he teaches you is to work for him but watch this what if i this is now allah now i'm playing the part of allah again if i have decided already that you will never be forgiven even before you started your good deeds, right? I've decided that. So it doesn't matter how many good deeds you do, you will never be forgiven. Now Allah says in the Quran over and over, um, it's uh, you need, well not over and over, it says that um, even Muhammad said there's no guarantee for paradise. Does He, he can't guarantee where you're going to end up um, because it's already been determined where you will be sent. So it doesn't matter if you do good deeds, the Quran and Muhammad is basically, basically saying if Allah has decided that you're going to hell, you're going to hell. And he didn't decide while you're on earth, he decided while you before you were born. So if you have been already predestined to go to hell, and no matter how many times you try to ask for forgiveness, if Allah decided that you are going to hell, you're going to hell. Because mm -hmm. there is no salvation then. It doesn't matter how many good deeds you do. I don't Simply know why you not my child. That, I think you read too much hadith. Well, this is also from the Quran. Did Muhammad know where he was going? Yeah, he doesn't know because he's no exception. Like, he still has to answer his... A prophet of God doesn't know where he's going. Yeah, of course. Did Muhammad sin? If, 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 if he knew, God will be unfair, right? But did Muhammad Just because sin? he draws you to do a job, he gives you a favor? Did, okay, well, did Muhammad sin? Probably, yes. Yes, he did. And you mustn't tell the other Muslims, they'll get upset with you. <laughs> because they say that he didn't sin, even though we know that he did sin. Have you ever asked yourself why the Ten Commandments are not in the Quran? They are in the Quran. What are you talking about? Show it to me, please. Show me, I'll give you one. Show me to keep the Sabbath holy. To keep what? The Sabbath holy. What's the Sabbath again? Exactly, so it's not in the Quran. But what's the concept of Sabbath? Exactly. This is why I'm saying to you that without me giving you the Sabbath is actually a big part of the um, Abrahamic faith. And yet you guys who claim it don't know it. This is why we're saying we don't serve the same God, sister. Allah is um, telling you to keep the Friday holy. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have that. We have that. But the Sabbath is not Friday. Hmm? The Sabbath is not Friday. What do you mean Friday? To keep a day holy, the day of rest. Okay. Why does it have to be a certain day of the week? Oh, because this, this is from the Abrahamic religion, Abrahamic faith from Moses. It says clearly, keep the Sabbath holy. Wait, for Jews it's Saturday, for you it's it's Sunday, for us it's no, Friday. For us it's every day, because we are resting in Christ. Christ said He is the Sabbath. He is the Lord of the Sabbath and we find rest and peace in Him. So every day for us is a Sabbath because we find rest and peace in Jesus. But Muslims that claim to be Abrahamic not only don't know the Ten Commandments, they don't know what the Sabbath is. Why did Muhammad break all Ten Commandments? The Muhammad you know is from Hadith. The Muhammad I know is not the same. Tell me about Muhammad from the Quran. He didn't what break. Is his what is his mother's name? You know those who break the Tenth Commandments are directly going to hell? Muhammad broke all Ten. No. Okay, did Muhammad, according to... Well, the Quran doesn't tell us anything about Muhammad, like nothing. So we have to go outside to find out who Muhammad is. Don't you think if the Quran doesn't tell you anything about Muhammad, you don't need to know about Muhammad? The no, 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 that's not what I said. That's not what I said. For example, right? Where was Muhammad born? Who was his father? Who was his mother? When did he start getting revelations? Um, who told him that Jibreel was a prophet? Um, all, these, all these very important questions are not in the Quran. There's nothing about Muhammad in the Quran They're that can teach important. us about Muhammad. They're not important for your salvation. 
Of course they are. We, to, to become, to have salvation, you need to know the person. For example, the founder of a religion is the most important person ever because that person will tell you about their mindset and where they're coming from. For example, if you had to ask me about Jesus, just using the Quran, I can tell you that he was sinless, he was pure, he did miracles, he's with Allah today, didn't die. Yeah, Called like Lila, um, when I gave you the Asbab al nuzul by Ahu Wahidi, these were the explanations on why the ver revelation was given. Don't you ever wonder why these revelations were given? Because when you read it at face value, you can't really figure out in detail why exactly these revelations were given by Allah. So it can be a little confusing, right? No. You zero. don't really know. Yeah, but you don't really know the full picture of why the verses were given. Do you know the background stories of them? No, you just know that Allah gave them. That's it. See, when we yes, have revelation... With all due respect, sister, if I want to know what Allah wants to teach me, I will go first in the primary source, Quran. Then I would not rely on men reports. I will go to the other scriptures and other revelations from God. That's okay, my sister, still... here's a question that's big for you. Can you show me the Shahada in the Quran? It, there is no Shahada in the Quran. Can you show me the five pillars of Islam in the Quran? There are more than five pillars in, in the Quran. No, 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 no. Like, how, where do you get you your... To understand you, there is two things that you, Muslim no, no. Mis misconfuse, okay? Muslim and Mu'min, okay? Muslim is like basically someone that submits to God. So that's what we mean by Muslim. So technically, if you believe in God, you're Muslim. And Mu'min is where the five pillars starts coming in. But it's not just five, but... They are in the, in the Quran, but that doesn't make you Muslim, that makes you Mu'min. Laila, do you pray five times a day? No, three. Okay, where do you get that from? Quran, only Quran. Okay, can you give me the verses? Yes, I can share them. Yeah, she's right there. The Quran does say three times a day. It says, it's in 11, 114. 2458 okay. and 238. Yeah, but I think your, your question, I got it a lot, uh, sister, from, like, trust me, from Sunnis. If you ask me, how do you pray, starting from the prayer of the one that you see, I would say, yes, I don't pray like that. But, I, but because you take, like, a man conception, a man interpretation, and I, I, I will challenge you to even find me how to pray in hadith, and which I did, and I didn't find, okay? The number of rakats, etc. That's like more traditional. But if you ask me how to pray based on Quran, I will give you how to pray based on Quran. Not the way, the way you see it, but there is a way to pray in the, in the Quran. I just find it, my, my sister, I find it hard to follow. I, I read the Quran and it made no sense. I needed someone to help me understand it, right? So I had to go to hadiths. Um, for example, in Surah 17, 1, it talks about the night journey, which never happened. It was a dream. Um, and it doesn't tell you it's Muhammad because the next sentence is Moses. Um, you go to Surah 17, 40, it talks about Allah swearing. Brother, I don't blame you because it's so difficult. Like the first time I read the Quran, it was so difficult for me. You know the number of proof. You know the wudu, the the way we exactly. wash ourselves. So for us, is like in the Quran is to purify your mind, your actions, and your direction. Right? It's not just washing your face, washing your hands, and wiping your feet is way more than that. And the number of time I have to pur purify my mind from everything they told me and everything I learned from hadith is so crazy that after you do it over and over, you start to see the revelation for what they are and not like, I would highly advise you not, like if you want to understand Islam, read the Quran and try not to read the comments and the okay, prayers. So, so watch this then, watch this. You read the Quran in Surah, in, in surah Al-Fatiha, right? Allah says, 
it's you we worship, it's you we ask for help. Who is Allah worshipping and asking for help? Surah Al Fatiha, 1 5. It's you that we worship. Yeah. Is is you that we worship. Mm -hmm. We're Who is Allah, Allah worshiping? No, we are worshiping. No, 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 no. Allah talks about we, us, and the, He talks about Him in the plural, in the plural, right? I want to know who is Allah worshiping because Allah is talking in the Quran, yes? Yeah, He's talking okay. like to us. So Allah, no, yeah, okay, He's talking to you. So let's see, Allah's talking to you and He's saying, it is you we worship and it's you we ask for help. Yeah, we say that. No, how do you know that you say that if you are Quran only? Because if I, when I picked up the Quran and I read this, and I know that Allah you know is that talking in the if you're Quran only. Oh. Who I, I, is Allah talking to? And I know that Allah you know is talking in the if you're Quran only. Echo. Because if I, I'm, I'm going to drop. Please add me back. I know that Allah is talking in the if you're Quran only. Okay, uh, the answer is very simple. If you understand the composition of the Quran, you understand that the recitation you do is like as if I tell you, repeat after me. You know, no, 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 sister. If I tell you, repeat kul. after me. Kul, it means say, right? But it's not saying kul. It's saying clearly, you alone we worship. You we ask for help. This is Allah talking. Agree. This is Allah say, telling us what to say. Show me where He's telling you. Show me where Allah is going to tell you that this is something you must say. Show that to me. But that's the whole book. That's how it's written. So, so if I go to another verse where Allah is talking, I must take it as it's me talking? Yeah, you can recite every verse. Like you, okay, no, so, so you're if, if talking when, like when Allah as says, if I tell you, tell me says, one, two, I am two, the three. Lord of the worlds. Am I the Lord of the Worlds or is Allah the Lord of the Worlds? He's the Lord of the Worlds, of course. Okay, so, but, but he said I. Now over here he's saying, you we worship, you we ask for help. How do I know that it's me or Allah talking in this? Um, this is what happens when you become Quran only. Because you have to understand that there is different, to, there's different types of verses. There are ones that are meant for recitation, there are ones that are meant for commandments, there are ones that are meant for telling stories. How do I know this? It's it's in the Quran, it's very clear, this method, okay, maybe it will take you like two times and you'll get it. It's, no, I it's did, very I did, I've read the Quran more than once, I'm saying to you that as, now that I'm reading it, I need help to understand who's talking when. So for example, when it says, that uh, in Surah 19, I'll just go to 1983, just because it's on my mind. In Surah 1983, it says, <clears throat> See you not that we sent the shaitan against the disbelievers to push them to do evil. Is that me? Who's who's the we? Because it's saying, see you not that we have sent the shaitan. Is that the people's talking now? Or is that Allah talking? Uh, it's very hard for me to tell you like that. You, you cannot take one verse out of... The Sora and expects. Yeah. Uh, well, I have to go to sleep, but I want to tell you something before I go. Go ahead. I really think you have a really open mind, and I really like that. You have a gentle soul, and I really like that too. So, thank you. I want you to keep listening to James with an open mind, mm -hmm. and maybe perhaps you might see the truth in Christ. God bless you, sister. God bless you. Thank you. Um, so, if I may uh, just point you out maybe in a direction that there are like some verses that we call mutashabat. I don't want to mispronounce it, but it's like there are some verses that will show you um, laws there are some verses that will show you story there are some verses that will detail the commandments of those laws and each of them have a different composition of the way they start 
but it's very clear when you study the methodology of the way it's written, it, it becomes clearer. Well, so far, as I said, I haven't seen anything that's clear to me in the Quran. There's no okay, fully okay. explained verses, there's no perfect You know, I will, I, will, I will send you to one thing that I love in the Quran is verse 548. You have to understand that the Quran... Wow, I can't believe you went to 548. I want you to read 547 for me. 547? Yeah. Mm. In fact, in fact, if you started in 543, it's even better. Because I, I love 548. Me too. <clears throat> Let me just open it. Before before you read it, do you believe that the Bible and the Torah is the same as it was back in the day? Define the same. The same hasn't changed. Okay, the, let's just say at the time of Muhammad, do you believe that the Quran, the Bible, and the Torah we have today she, is the same as she the doesn't Muhammad? believe? She doesn't believe it's corrupted, so. That's yeah, I don't sign. believe. Yeah, I don't believe it's corrupted necessarily. The way I see it is like, if you take just the Torah and you don't take the Talmud, we'll find we'll find similar message, messages. Um, so, like, but there are certain things that like are repeated for a purpose and to confirm the message and there are certain things that are like cleared uh, in, in a certain sense in the Quran because it um, either concealed as an information or it's like uh, said in a different way. So that's how, that's what I believe. So I would like... Do you believe would, that Jesus died? Jesus died? Crucified? Well, the crucifixion, like, I don't necessarily believe it. It happened to Jesus. I believe that Jesus was saved by God, raised by God. Um, so, yeah. But the Bible that we have today, that you say that you believe in, confirms the crucifixion. Yeah, that I'm still like, of of course, like so far I read the Quran and I'm starting to read the Bible. So Can it's I ask you, you I the Bible. Sorry, which where do you are you starting at Genesis or are you starting the New Testament? Well, I have the New King James and the Blue Letters were was suggested to me. Okay, can I just give you another suggestion, and um, to make it easy to understand the Bible. Um, mm -hmm. For someone now that like when I when first time I read the Bible, I would suggest you start with John. Read the book of John first, and the reason I'll say that is because when you read the book of John, you understand who Jesus is, right? And John gives you lots of nuggets, gold nuggets in in John. And the reason I say that is because when you read First John, then Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and then when you go to the Old Testament. And say you started Genesis, you will see Jesus all over the Old Testament. And the reason for that is, um, is because Jesus not only quotes from the Old Testament, <clears throat> he's also described in the Old Testament, and he uses the same words in the New Testament. So, if 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 I may, I would suggest you read the book of John, which is the most amazing thing you'll ever read, and then Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Go back to the Old Testament, read the Old Testament, and then read the hebrews and you know acts and whatever all the rest of the books of the new testament and i promise you you'll understand why we are so in love with this man called jesus that came to earth to take upon our sins and free us from our bondage to give us this love that we have because you know the reason why people in in christ don't say you guys say peace be upon him when you talk about muhammad we don't need to say peace be upon him when we talk about jesus because jesus is peace he is peace. So mm -hmm. why does he need peace? And this is why I'm saying when you read the book of John, you'll understand why we are so passionate 
about Jesus. And I, I tell you what, when you read it, go in not thinking about him as a man or not, not thinking him as a prophet or a god or a messenger. Just read about this man called Jesus and see how amazing he is. Honestly, mm -hmm. go in there without yes. having any you know, back thoughts in your mind or don't think of him as Isa or nothing. Just read about this man called Jesus and I promise you, right from the first John chapter 1, 1, you will fall in love with this man. And then you'll understand, because in John 4, <coughs> sorry, we're changing the subject, but I get passionate about Jesus. In John 4, there's a, there's a story about a, Samar about a woman and she's a this Samaritan woman and she's just sitting there and Jesus comes up and he has this conversation with her and in this conversation Jesus goes from being just a normal man to becoming a prophet and later on she then calls him a messiah and later Jesus talks to other people and these people say you are the salvation of the world now he went from being just a man to being a prophet to being the messiah to being the savior of the world and right at the end of that, he brings someone back to life. Mm. Right? And this is this is now I'm saying he starts off as a man. But when you get to know him, you'll see that he's so much more than just a man. He is one and truly God. That's why you know we get passionate about Christ because we love him. Um in, in a way that I don't think Muslims quite understand because you guys in Islam don't know the concept of love. You don't know the concept of relationship. You have the slave master. You must remember that a father will love his child a thousand times more than a slave master will all love his slave. And there's the difference. It's that relationship that we have that makes us so passionate. It makes us fall in love over and over with the gift that we've been given, which is eternal that's, life and it comes that's, only that's through Christ. Why I like the, the verse 548, to be honest. It's because like for me you know the way you see jesus speaks to you and makes you a better person so that's the good guide for you you understand to become that good person and i disagree about what you said obviously about the quran not the rest i understand where you get the rest but the quran for me is the message that speaks to me and makes me a better person. So, like to, and this verse Your, is is from God in my belief that tells us if God wanted to make us one community, He would have done it. Okay, but He didn't. And why He didn't is because he, to each of us He gave basically a guide to follow and we must compete in good deeds and none of us has like the truth we will find the differences in our systems so uh, do you believe that allah wants all his children to come to him or he wants them not to come to him oh, i'm saying our children sorry he wants his, his slaves to come to him we're not slaves we submit it's a difference oh, okay we, you know, um, you, you, you submit willingly to your creator because you kind of uh, recognize that he's the creator. But do you believe that Allah wants all of us to come to him? Of course. So why would he put devils in us making us do sin? Why would he put devils in us to make us do evil? Why would he make, you know, in Surah 488 it says that uh, if Allah leads someone astray, there's nobody that can change their minds? Uh, Where the Bible is the that, total opposite. In the sense that 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 says basically that, like you can that that was sent for the prophets, you know, when they would break down because, like the followers that followed them at the same at some point they stopped believing and they like kind of forgot the the guidance. And the prophet will be like super sad or like angry, whatever. And then Allah says, like you don't have, like you don't have to worry. It's only Allah that guides in that sense. Can, can you can you show me any verse in the Quran where Allah sends angels to guide people to Him? 
Because I can show you a verse where Allah puts devils to lead people astray and Allah himself leads people astray. That's why this question is so important because I'm saying to you that Jesus came for all. He didn't just come for one group. You, you know, Muslims try to say that, but even in the Quran it says Jesus came for everyone, not just the Jews. Because oh, the Jews oh, came yes. first. Now, can you show me, for example, um, Allah calls me the worst of creatures, but yet he doesn't send an angel to try to guide me to him. He forces me to go the opposite way. So this is when, again, why it's very difficult for me to understand how people can continue being Muslim, knowing that Allah is the one that's making them sin or make or push them to sin. You ask me for one verse, you believe in angel Gabriel? Yeah, no angels, yeah, you know, yes, yes. So there is a verse where he, he he is sent to bring down the 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 Quran to guide us toward Allah. I can give it to you. Yeah, give it to me, please. According to you, was the Quran given to us in one night, or was it come down in in twenty three years, or? He came down surah by surah. But you have your Quran in front of you, right? Mm-hmm. Can you read Surah 97.1? Indeed, we send the Quran down during the night of decree. So the Quran was sent down in one night? Watch this. Hang on a second before no, you answer started. that. Before you answer, before you answer, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you two more. Don't answer. Watch mm -hmm. this. Can you read Surah two, one eighty five, Al Baqarah one eighty five. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you just one more after that, and then you can explain. So the first one was ninety seven one. Now it's Al Baqarah one eighty five. So complete period, yeah, 185 is about fasting. No, read what it says. The month of Ramadan in which was revealed the Quran, a guidance for the people and clear proof of guidance and criteria. So the Quran was sent down in 97.1 in, one, in, the, in the night. Over here it was sent down in the month of Ramadan. Now you can read 25.32. Yeah, that's actually something a brother of mine is studying. I and wish he could help. Believe, say, why was the Quran not sent down to him all at once? Thus, that we may strengthen your heart thereby and, okay, sent all at once is what you want to... Yeah, it was sent in stages. So I just before you answer, I want to show you this. In 97.1, the Quran was sent down in one night. In 2.185, it was sent down in the month of Ramadan. And then in 25.32, it was sent down in stages. In fact, in some translations, it actually tells you over 23 years to try to help you understand it. Now, if I'm reading the Quran with no help, no hadiths, no um, tafsirs, and I'm reading the Quran, we have a problem. No, because we this don't. is a contradiction. Did it come down in the night of Al Qadr? Did, Did it, it come say down in the month came of down Ramadan? as a whole? It says the Quran. It doesn't say part of the Quran or some of the Quran or a verse of the Quran. You it have says to the Quran came the down. Quran, the Quran is not what you think. I know I refer to it as the Quran. You know, the Quran is within, like, you know, the Quran that everybody knows as is inside the Kitab. Now, I don't want to go too much in details, but the Quran is inside. The The Kitab is, cha is chapter 1 to chapter 114, okay? And the Quran is inside the Kitab. So I'm not too sure. I'm, 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 so what, what are you saying? Because I don't understand now. Did the Quran come down all in one night? Like... I don't, so if you read 97.1, right, and you got no outside help. There is Al-Furqan, there is Al-Quran. I know that, I know that. 
But say, say I was in jail and I was allowed one book and I'm by myself, solitary, con solitary confinement, by myself, and I ask for the Quran and I read the Quran and I come to these three verses where it says the Quran was revealed on the night of Al Qadr, the Quran was revealed on the month of Ramadan, and the Quran came down in stages. Which one must I must I must I um, believe in? It's a mistranslation, but I I don't know exactly the answer. I have to to reflect on it. But my understanding, because I already had this question myself, but it was a while ago. I found out that, that inside the Quran, uh, inside the Kitab, so whatever you refer as the Quran is like, is a, a general common word, but in reality it's not. The real Quran is inside the chapters you're reading. So the, the, those chapters contain more than the Quran. They contain the Al-Furqan, the Quran, and I forgot the other one. But... <coughs> But okay, basically, so. uh, what after that, these surahs, you see like the verse you gave me, the Baqarah is clearly talking, I think, about the Quran, the, the Quran itself. But the second, the second you gave me is, is Surat Al-Furqan. And Al-Furqan and Al-Quran is not the same. Okay, so so you said something about the the book. In can you read Surah? What is the okay? Let me ask you this: What is the most repeated seven uh, verses of the Quran? For me, yeah. <clears throat> I don't recite. I don't pray. Al Fatiha, like... right? Well, that's that's for those who pray like that. Yeah. Okay, but, but there's a verse in the Quran. So, okay, let me. So, so the reason why I asked you at the beginning about Al Fatiha and asking the question about. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to give you the answer to my question so you can use it next time somebody asks. So, the reason why in Al Fatiha, when it says we worship and we ask for help, <clears throat> do you believe that that actually came from Allah? What? Everything inside that book came from Allah. Well, there is three things from Omar, but okay. But watch this. In Surah 1587, this actually makes a distinction between the seven most often repeated Quran, repeated verses, and the Quran. So there's a, that's why I want to know what are the seven often repeated verses of the Quran. If you read Surah 1587, tell me that. Which are the seven most repeated verses? To be honest, I don't know. Because it's giving you clear distinction between the Quran and another book, or another verse, or another something. You see, that's what I'm saying, sis. The Quran, do you believe the Quran is clear and fully explained yes. and perfectly detailed? Yes. You do? Yeah, for what it contains, yes. Okay, so can you read Surah 11 one for me? Eleven one. Yeah, good. Can you just read that for me? Don't tell me it's the sounds. <laughs> After you know it that, is. I have to go uh, to pray. But so Alif Lam Ra. Yes. You keep reading. Sound. Keep reading. This is a book whose verses are perfected and then presented in detail from one wise and acquainted. Beautiful. So I asked you, is the Quran fully explained? You said yes. The first three words, Alif Lam Ra, mm. nobody knows, right? I know. So how can it be perfectly explained and fully detailed? Don't say nobody knows. There are a lot of people that know what those mean, those okay. words. So I'm waiting for them to, to step up because it says over here that it's a perfectly detailed and presented in a perfectly, fully explained and perfectly detailed. But nobody knows what Alif Lam Ra means. You but the contradiction the first, is the first time I joined the love, Alif Lamin, Alif Lam Ra are sounds that are basically uh, sounds that comes back often in the Quran and they point out to very important information and those sounds you have to 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 pay attention to 
to their... Um, How do you pronounce Alif Lam Ra? The way you just said? No, 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 because this is three words, three letters, but in Arabic it's put together as one. What do you mean? In Arabic, if you look at the Arabic part of the word, it's not, it's, it's, it's put together like three letters, right? Mm -hmm. How do you pronounce those three letters? Alif Lamra. You don't say them together? Like, you know, if you put a sentence, like you see my name is James. You could say James or you could say J-A-M-E-S. Now, Alif Lamra is like saying J-A-M. No, it's really how they pronounced, even with some accents, like Alif Lam Ra. Yeah, you said it makes it, so certain people know what it means. Yes. <coughs> Never met them, still trying to meet them. <laughs> but then you see this one says that it's perfectly detailed. Is that for everybody or is it only for somebody? It's perfectly detailed in the Quran. Okay. And but, present, but the so, scholars, so, you're who, right, the who, scholars who? doesn't know. I asked that question so many times until I started searching it myself. Because there's a contradiction again in Surah 37, where it says that some are ambiguous. No. See, this is a, something that I... That verse is like... It doesn't say some are ambiguous. It what says it that say? some, some have like, you know, some are like black and clear. white. Some are black and white. Mm -hmm. And some are like, you know, you have to read between the lines. Ah, but, so hang on a second. Watch this now. So you and I can read the same thing and have different interpretations when we no. read between the lines, yeah. right? If, if, like at the beginning, maybe. Because, you know, sometimes when I read the Quran, it didn't mean anything, certain verses, I will just go through. But sometimes you'll go through something in your life and suddenly that verse would, would be revealed to you in its clear meaning. So, yes, at the beginning we might have different interpretation, but at the end, when you read only the Quran, we will find the, the, the right interpretation within the book. Last question, my sis. Can you read, and using that example, what you just said now, can you read Surah 17 1 and tell me what explanation? Because you, I want you to read between the lines now and tell me what you think this is saying. 17 I'm not, 1. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm a scholar. No, 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 but again, this the Quran didn't come for scholars. The Quran came for the people Everyone. of Arabia. Yes. Right? Mm. So the people of Arabia. They shouldn't be scholars to understand Allah. They should be everyday people knowing what Allah says and what He does and what yeah. He wants. Mm. So, but you have to understand that tell me that what you book, think. That book, you cannot just like, you know, when we pray every day, like the way I pray, it's three times a day, is like you read the Quran and you reflect on it. It's not something that you can just read like a, a novel and, a, and get it all at once, you know? It, it, it's, it's like, the more you read it, the, m the more things you experience in life, the more it's going to talk to you. Certain verse will stand out and you will, I don't know how to explain it, but you will understand the deeper meaning that once you didn't. So, this verse that you just pointed out, exalted in he who took his servant by night from Al-Masjid Al-Haram to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, who surrounded... in the Arabic. Hmm? The Arabic doesn't mention the mosques. No, it says from like... The furthest mosque to the closest mosque. Exactly. But anyway, if we, if we had to read that without... What would you believe? Who was carried? And which is the furthest mosque, which is the closest mosque? Because Al-Aqsa was only built after the year 700. And that's no, another 60 years after and Muhammad. Al-Aqsa in Arabic means just the farthest. Yeah, now, the furthest now I agree Aksa. with you that they took uh, certain names like al Makkah, Al-Aqsa. They, they come from the Qur'an, but don't question the source 
question the rest, you know? That's how I, I started doing. In the source, you have to question. I mean, like, so who was carried? Okay, so, so anyway, let's go back to this. Who was carried? Which servant was carried from one mosque to the other mosque? I believe in that surat is uh, when he was talking about the Prophet and changing the direction. He's hearing. He's hearing. Yeah, the Prophet. Which Prophet? I, I believe by his Prophet Muhammad. Okay, is Muhammad a Bani Israel, a child of Israel? Mm, no. Okay, so the heading, the chapter is called the Israelites, Bani Israel. And you, the first thing it talks about is a servant. Doesn't mention the name, doesn't mention the mosques. If I go to 17.2, it's talking about Moses. Why would Muhammad be mentioned as an Israelite if the second verse, 17.2, is talking about Moses? That's a very good question. I don't know. So this is why I'm saying to you, the Quran is not fully detailed and explained because it doesn't give me details. I don't know who the servant is. I don't know what the mosque is, the furthest or the closest. But did you read the, the rest to understand? Say Maybe again? you're right. Maybe it's about Moses. It, a lot of Muslims are actually saying that now because we've been pushing this question. A lot of times we've asked, how is it that Israel is mentioned and Muhammad is mentioned, but the next verse is talking about Moses? This is why there's no continuity or, or, or flow in the Quran, because it jumps from one thing to the next and we never know what to expect. There's no explanation on verses. There's no, no, there is. Um, there is. It's just that you have to, to like read it like and use what is referred inside it and not outside because outside thank you. there's if a I, lot of information that they add and then you get lost you know no, no, sometimes they this? put well, muhammad and it's not about muhammad you know so exactly so let me ask you now now that i said it was moses according to this verse because we're talking about bani israel we're talking about the children of israel this is the chapter the entire chapter is talking about them and it's talking about his servant we agree that muhammad was a servant, we agree Moses was a servant, we agree Jesus was a servant. So we don't know which servant is being talked about here. But the second chapter, 17, 2, second verse, is confirming it's talking about Moses. Now, again, if I said to you, if I was sitting on an island somewhere with nobody else and just a Quran, and I read this, 